Hello everyone, and welcome to a very special Minecraft New Nintendo 3DS Edition video. In this video, I'm going to be completing the first ever public 100 days challenge in this version. As far as I'm concerned, no other YouTuber out there has done a public 100 days challenge in this version as of yet. So, I figured that I would be the first person to take on the challenge of doing a 100 days challenge in Minecraft 3DS. First and foremost, let's go over a few guidelines that I'll be following in this challenge. I obviously cannot die in any way throughout this entire challenge. The whole point of this challenge is to physically survive for 100 days without any deaths, and if I die at any point throughout the challenge, I will have to restart from the very beginning. Also, I have to use a randomly generated seed, so that way I don't know the location of any key natural structures. I will be completing various challenges throughout the 100 days I will be spending in my world, including completing 30 achievements, building a house, barn, and some sort of smelting machine. Also, I will be sleeping through almost every night throughout this as well. Of course, the main difference here that sets my 100 days challenge apart from almost every single one ever made is the fact that it's on the 3DS edition, which brings up a few challenges of its own due to the limitations this version has. Before I get started, I have an unedited version of this video in my editor with all of the clips, but the video ended up being 20 hours long, and the file is 256 gigabytes in size, if you were wondering. The video itself with all clips is just 20 hours because days of Minecraft 3DS last 10 minutes, and as I mentioned earlier, I will be sleeping through almost every night. So I cannot upload the unedited clip unfortunately without filling up my hard drives or waiting days for it to upload to YouTube. Also, before I get started, I want to give a quick shout out to Ref64 for being the first one to suggest this idea, and also many others as well over time. So, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Before we get into going over my journey completing this challenge, the seed for this world ended up being 174-190-7763. Alright, now let's get into day number one. Like with most 100 day challenges, you might think that I started off by getting wood, but I actually decided to explore the vast desert that I spawned in for Desert Temple. I ended up getting pretty lucky, and I did find one after only a couple of minutes. I knew already that this seed was going to end up being great. After carefully dropping down into the temple, I ended up finding pretty okay loot overall. The first chest had some gold in it, the second one had a saddle, and the third one had a piece of iron horse armor, and finally, the fourth one had some more gold. The rest of the loot was just typical stuff that isn't all that valuable at all. Definitely not the best, but considering I was just on the first day, it didn't bring me down much at all. After this, I finally went over to chop down some trees. Then I crafted a crafting table and some tools. Getting some stone in a bed were my next two priorities, so I went and got some stone, and I also realized that I had enough string in my inventory to make three wool. So with that, I crafted myself a bed. Soon after, it turned night, and with this, I successfully completed my first day in this challenge. Only 99 days to go from here. Day 2 was pretty uneventful overall, I mainly just grabbed some coal and iron. On day 3, I managed to tame a horse, and I found a place where I would eventually build my house and all my other planned builds. I smelted some food, and then I settled down for the night. On the morning of day 4, I decided to do some exploring, and I came across my first village. No blacksmith or cleric here, sadly, but I did grab some potatoes. Then, I managed to somehow find a second village almost right next to the first one. Like the first village, though, there was no blacksmith, but there was a cleric, thankfully, which I will be using later to trade for enderpearls. I ended up trapping the cleric as well, preparing it for the future slave work I will be putting it through. After exploring some more, I managed to find yet another village, but this time it was in a savanna biome. I thought this would be a trash village at first, until I found a blacksmith at the top of this hill. The chest had a bunch of iron stuff, so not really all that impressive, but still nice. You may have noticed that I forgot to bring my bed with me, so I was not able to sleep on the night of the fourth day. I was able to make it back to my base, unharmed however. I did pretty much the same things on days 5 and 6. I started building my house walls, I did a lot of landscaping, and I got some materials for the stone bricks on the walls. Lots of landscaping is going to have to be done for future builds, and later in this challenge I end up spending honestly way too much time on it, but hey, at least everything ended up being flat. Days 7 and 8 were also pretty much the same, as I ended up doing some more landscaping outside, and I did some more work on my house. Also, 
I began digging out the basement of my house, which will eventually house my nether portal, mine, and storage room. However, I started by mining first as that was the most important thing this early on in this challenge. I ended up finding a good amount of coal and iron, and mops of course. I ended up cutting the mining trip a bit short, and on day 9 I decided to focus more on my house, by adding several layers of wall up by using all the cobble I just mined, as well as adding a few minor details such as the front and rear doors, and digging out some more of the basement. Now for the first mini milestone day in this challenge, day 10, I finally upgraded all my tools and armor to iron, and right after doing that, I had a very close encounter with a creeper right in front of my house. Nothing bad happened, but it did make me jump a little bit. Some more layers of wall went up on this day, and after some time, I finished the walls for the first floor, and I added the ceiling to the first floor, which also acted as the flooring for the second floor. I really got into detail about things in the last 10 days, but the next couple definitely aren't as interesting as the last 10, so I'll briefly go over those. On day 11, I did some more housework and I decided to start strip mining, which proved to be a great idea as I ended up finding some diamonds. Days 12 through 14 were pretty uneventful apart from me finding another diamond vein, while collecting a ton of coal, iron, and any other ore I could find. I also managed to find a slime, but no natural structures unfortunately. On the last half of day 14, I sorted out my inventory and worked on my basement quite a bit more, making it very close to finished. On day 15, a pretty large milestone was finally hit. I found my first enderman, killed it, and I actually got an ender pearl from it. So yes, it took a whole 15 in-game days to get my first ender pearl. Luckily, I'll be using the cleric later on to get the rest. On day 16, I got more materials from my house and I started decorating my first floor by adding a nice decorative corner with some paintings. Days 17 through 19 were also pretty uneventful as I mainly worked on the main building of my house, creating a staircase down in my mind for easy access, as well as doing an extensive amount of landscaping, preparing for the future barn. Once all of this was complete, my first floor of my house was almost done, but I still had a lot of landscaping to do outside and of course the second floor. On day 20, I primarily worked on the second floor, which ended up being my bedroom. I made some additional walls, transferred all the necessities up to this floor, and I managed to put the ceiling on. After this, I decided to put housework on hold and I went to the nether. So I went down and grabbed obsidian, created the nether portal in the slot allocated for it in the basement, and went in. At this point, disaster struck and my 3DS crashed right as I enter the nether. This means that I now have to redo everything that I did before the autosave, but this does not affect my progress thankfully. After rebooting the game, I was finally able to make it to the nether on day 21. Now that we're in the nether, I figured out that time actually continues to pass in the overworld while you're in the nether, so you will see the day counter go up as I'm explaining what I'm doing here. Obviously, I won't be able to sleep, so I'm essentially looking at the position of the sun before I enter and calculating how many days have passed when considering that days last 10 minutes and nights last 7 minutes. My first goal was to collect some materials, so I collected some various nether blocks, killed some mobs, and I collected quite a bit of nether quartz on my way to find a nether fortress. On my way there, I also found an enderman. Unfortunately though, I did not get so lucky this time and I did not drop an enderpearl. I didn't give up on the nether, just yet. Though despite that event... I continue to explore, and explore, and explore, and explore, until I decided to just give up on this recording and start another one some other time. So in the end, I did not find another fortress, meaning I wasted all time spent on days 22 through 24. I was definitely not very happy at this point, but I still kept going due to the fact that the sea was just so amazing in the overworld. It really helped motivate me to continue this attempt at least. I decided to go back to housework on day 25, working on my basement storage room and material collecting. I managed to make some really good progress on it in a single day, and I was hopefully planning to get my whole basement done by day 35 at the latest, as I was wanting to get some nether fortress materials to decorate my portal. On day 26, I tried again at the nether, hoping to find a fortress, and this time, to my surprise, I actually found one. This fortress ended up being really good, as there were two blaze spawners that were very close to one another. After collecting some nether bricks from my nether portal later, I grabbed some blaze rods and then I explored the fortress a little bit. The loot from the chest here was great, as I found a couple of diamonds and lots of iron. Continuing on, I grabbed the remaining blaze rods I needed and I traveled back home. At this point in time, I finished my entire storage room from top to bottom. I'm honestly pretty happy with how this room turned out, even though the design is quite basic. I then spent a lot of time grabbing materials so that I can work on my bedroom. 
I added a furnace and crafting wall, complete with some paintings, decor around my bed, and a quick access chest. By this time, it was day 29, and I began to start work on my roof. My house at this point was almost complete. Days 30 through 34 were honestly very uneventful out of most days, as I pretty much just worked on my roof, added some extra house details, and spent way too much time landscaping once again. Days 35 through 39 was pretty much the same thing. I was mostly trying to finish my house at this point so I can move on to something else. I did more landscaping, and I also added some paths on the outside of my house, which will lead to the various things I'll be building next. And I also added some light-activated lights outside using daylight sensors. Also, I put some final touches on the interior of my house, pretty much marking it done. So, the exterior was the only thing left at this point. On day 40, I finally began working on my barn. I basically just did the walls on the first day, and then on days 41 through 43, I worked on adding the remaining walls, gathering materials, and adding the fences for each animal pen. I plan to have most general friendly mobs that provide food, plus a spot for my horse. I spent pretty much the entirety of day 44 on my cobblestone mine for the purpose of finishing the roof made out of stone bricks and stairs. I was honestly pretty impressed with how quick I managed to finish my barn, all things considered. Days 46 through 47 were spent getting tons of materials, such as stone and wood, smelting all the stone using my furnace wall, and putting the finishing touches on the roof of my barn. On day 49, I started on the exterior detail of the barn, which consists of birch wood details on all sides. I then created the crop farms that I plan to have in the second floor of the barn, which will come in handy later for making crops needed for villager trades, and food of course. Finally, on day 50, the halfway point, I managed to complete the entire barn, detail and all, including all the exterior detail and bone meal across the ground. Again, I was very impressed with how quick I managed to complete this, as it only took me a little less than 10 days to fully complete. I decided to explore some more next, in hopes to find even more villages. I did manage to find one on day 51, and on day 52, it was at this point I decided to dig down underneath every single village, because this was the method I was going to use to find a stronghold, and they have a very high chance of spawning underneath a village. And because I had four to choose from, I have quite a bit of chances to find one. I already dug down underneath the two desert villages by this point, so I wasn't expecting much. But to my surprise, there was actually a stronghold beneath this village. I breathed a huge sigh of relief at this point as I began to explore it, until I found a library and opened the chest. Yep, you probably guessed it. The game crashed. Great. Now I have to do all that exploring all over again. After going all the way back to the stronghold, I found something very weird and concerning. I've already seen something like this in my Season 2 Survival World, but this situation, where only half the end portal spawns in, concerned me even more, because this stronghold does not seem like it's very big at all. But I proceeded exploring anyway, until I found the same library as once before, and again stupid me decided to open the same chest I opened earlier, and the game crashed yet again. At this point, I was getting very frustrated, as you can probably imagine, so when I went back to the stronghold, I just broke the chest that was making my game crash, and lo and behold, the source of crashing, a map. Yes, that's right, maps exist in this version. As most of you know, maps are permanently placed on the touch screen in this version, so there's absolutely no need for a map item, and yet they exist anyway. They don't function at all, but it's still weird to see them nonetheless. Anyways, I continued exploring the stronghold, and after what seemed like ages, I finally found an end portal room. At this point, it was day 54, so I already passed day 53 as I was exploring the stronghold. After this, I walked all the way back home as I never decided to bring my horse back over here after the crashes, and I started making my next build, which was up here for fishing over this river. I made the wooden path over to it, and I made the platform. Of course, I didn't have any luck when I fished, however. After this, I spent the rest of day 54 on an all new strip mine in hopes to find even more diamonds. On days 55 through 56, I found a cave pretty early on in my strip mine. Great, I thought. Maybe I can actually find something other than iron, coal, and gold in this cave. Yeah, I guess not. I give up once again at this point, thinking I was wasting my time. Probably a good idea, as I already have enough iron, coal, and gold to last me the rest of the remaining 44 days. On day 57, I went back to the nether. Why, you ask? Well, I wanted to get lava, but in the process of doing this, I almost died like three times, and I told myself that I was never going back to the nether again in this world, and thank god I stuck to that claim. 
concluding off day 57, I decided to do something a lot less dangerous and I began to herd some animals into my barn. Days 58 through 59 were pretty uneventful, as I mainly just did some work on herding animals and did some extra detailing on my house. On day 60 though, I decided to begin an all new project in this world, and that is a super smelting system. I didn't get too complicated with anything, but I did manage to create the furnace systems, which have chests for coal automation, as well as a chest for items to go when they're done smelting. Like I said, I didn't make anything complicated, but I really didn't want to do that, as it would just be a waste of time and materials at that point. From day 61 through 64, I worked on the smelter some more and I decided to work on a few achievements, one of which being smelt everything. At the end of this video, I'll go over all 30 achievements I managed to complete. Finishing the smelter building took quite a while, mostly because I had to continuously grab cobblestone and andesite in order to add all the details necessary. On day 65 through 67, I worked on the smelter and I finally managed to finish it on day 68. I think it turned out pretty well overall, despite me building this as quickly as possible due to my limited amount of time here in this world. After that, I went all the way back over to the stronghold because I just wanted to explore the rest of it. On day 69, I went back home pretty much empty handed. This wasn't a great stronghold honestly, but at least it has what I'm looking for. And with that, I finally reached day 70. Only 30 days to go at this point, so I really needed to begin preparing for the end by trading for some ender pearls. But instead of doing that, I spent day 70 through 74 strip mining one last time in hopes to maybe find some diamonds. And I did! After three days of exploring, I managed to find some diamonds. It was great to finally find some more diamonds after so many mining attempts in previous days. So I happily grabbed those, smelted everything else, and I went back home. After this, I decided I would go mining again! So on day 75, I was off strip mining once again. And what do you know? More diamonds! I definitely was not expecting this, but it does help in going towards diamond armor. This mining trip didn't last as long as the last one, as I was done by day 76. On the remainder of day 76, I completed a few more achievements, including making an iron golem, and I finally started a trade with the cleric. I had lots of gold, so I took advantage of the cleric's first trade to get some emeralds, and to unlock its future levels. I then went over to every other type of villager, attempting to get the most out of all the items that I had on hand. When I was all done for the time being, I had three emeralds and three enderpearls, which I don't think is too bad for my first trading session. Don't worry, there will be plenty more to come. On days 77 through 79, I did much of the same, grabbing materials from my house that I can trade, and of course, trading them. I did attempt to trade all my crops at this point, which did help some, and I even stole crops from the other nearby villages just for my own benefit. To conclude off this recording session, I went mining again in hopes to find some coal and gold to trade, which I did find, but also some more diamonds! I have to say, my diamond luck in this world has been amazing. And now for day 80. Pretty uneventful day, unfortunately, due to me still being in the mine, so I spent that whole day just pretty much getting out of them. On days 81 through 82, I went back home and I worked on just a couple more achievements, one of which being Freight Station. Days 83 and 84 were spent primarily on trading with villagers, and you guessed it, more strip mining for ores. At this point, mining for ores was just for trading at this point, as it is one of the easiest ways to gather materials for trading. I spent the next four days, 85 through 89, working on achievement completion for the most part. I spent way too much time on local brewery for some reason, and after this I spent some time readying myself for the end by getting food and sorting through my inventory, and I finally finished up grabbing all the ender eyes. Now you may think I'm just skipping through these last few days just to be done explaining things quicker, but not much at all went on in the last 20 days of this challenge. It was all readying for the end, trading, and achievement completion. Really nothing else happened under those three things, other than of course defeating the ender dragon. Day 90 finally came around, and that marks the last 10 days of this challenge. I was getting very anxious at this point as the end fight was coming up fast. So I had to ensure that I was really ready to go. I intended as much as I could on day 90, and I managed to do a decent amount, all things considered. It's not much, but I hope it will help a little bit. And this was it. I traveled all the way over to the village with the stronghold underneath on day 91. You might be wondering why I'm entering the end on day 91, and that's because time passes in other dimensions. So I'm taking that into consideration as I have plans to explore the end city and I want to build a small memorial for the dragon egg at the very end, so I want to give myself enough time for all of that. On day 92, after spending some more time getting myself ready, I entered the end portal. 
Right off the bat, I began to climb towers to break the end crystals. You might think that this is a terrible method of doing things, but it's a lot safer than standing in one place and shooting arrows at the crystals. I did end up doing this later on for the easier ones, but for the tall towers, I piled up to break them. Of course, I did have a lot of close calls, almost too close on some occasions initially. At this point, it was day 93, and I still haven't really made much progress on killing the Ender Dragon. And finally, after a lot of close calls and running circles around the end cr and finally, after a lot of close calls and running circles around the end crystal towers, I actually managed to kill the Ender Dragon with no deaths. Once I saw the animation for the dragon dying, I made a huge sigh of relief. I actually made it. I survived almost 100 days in a Minecraft 3DS world with no deaths to report of. I was honestly so proud that I even managed to accomplish this, as this is likely the first ever public completion of a 100 days challenge on this version that I know of. I spent some time thinking for a few minutes on the amount of time I put into this video and all the things that I managed to complete in a span of almost 20 hours, and just the sheer fact that I was almost done. I then proceeded to grab the dragon egg, and after some searching, I managed to find the outer end portal and entered it on day 94. So yes, I'm obviously not done yet, but don't worry, I never ended up dying between now and the real end of this challenge. Shockingly enough, I actually spawned right next to an end city, which is just incredible. This seed has honestly given me so much luck, which is just unheard of ever when I play Minecraft 3DS. However, all these amazing things eventually came to a really, really horrible end. I climbed up to the end city, and lo and behold, there was a chunk error, which essentially deleted probably over half of the end city. I was absolutely devastated. How can my amazing 100 days challenge possibly end like this? I was determined to find at least some loot and hopefully an end ship to get an elytra, but after spending two days of time exploring the outer end, I had no luck at all. Days 95 and 96 were not only wasted, but I ran out of blocks and just called it after that, and went back home. I shouldn't be too sad however, as I can still make the dragon egg memorial I planned by using purpur and other end blocks. On day 97, I managed to make it back home, which didn't take very long honestly, and I began to plan out the area for my dragon egg memorial. I want to make a mini end scene in a way by using the end stone blocks on the ground to represent the flooring of the end. I finished it, and I was honestly pretty proud of how this turned out despite the fact that I only had really three days left in this challenge. To conclude off the last three days, on day 98, I decided that I wanted to make a 100 monument. I gathered the materials for it, and on day 99, I fully completed it. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I didn't have much time left until day 100 to really perfect it. Before day 100, I did a quick walk around of all my completed builds, just to really take in all that I completed throughout this journey. It took a very long time to get here, but I actually made it. Day 100 was completed. I looked outside at the sunset for one last time, and I went to bed. The first public Minecraft 3DS 100 Days Challenge has officially been completed. This video was definitely one of my most monumental and definitely one of the longest ones I have ever made, that's for sure. But this challenge proved to me that even though Minecraft 3DS has many limitations compared to most other Minecraft versions, you can still have fun and complete most challenges that people are doing in other versions. And with that, it is time that I have a break from speaking for so long. Believe it or not, I managed to speak this entire script in one go. Yeah, one go. My voice is definitely pretty tired now at this point. So with all that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.